Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we'll be reviewing a 2025 Kia Sportage. This one is the EX package, so it's kind of like the more affordable value one. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Jerry Sander Kia here in Salt Lake. Bring me some time with the Sportage. I'll include a link to the website in the description down below. If you have any questions, just ask for Brian. Also, I'll include a link to my car buying guide. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a 2.5 liter four cylinder that goes through an eight speed automatic. Fuel economy is 23 around town and then 27 on the highway with power outputs being 187 horsepower and then 178 pound feet of torque. Before I move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you're into some more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Well, when it comes to looks, the Sportage is definitely unique. <laughs> That's for sure. I mean, this headlight cluster very, very interesting. You can see the silver trim down below, well, below the Kia logo to be exact. We've got the blacked out trim of the rest of the grille. And so you've got this contrast between the white, the silver, and the black with this particular Sportage. Now around the side here, our turn wheel setup is 235 by 60 by 18 in the front and over in the rear. And you can see here with the wheel design, you've got the silver mixed up, mixed up with the black trim. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyways, we've got the fender flares there. And then the rest of the bodywork is also unpainted just like the fender flares. But there is that little bit of trim that's painted, which is interesting. And then here is the side profile. Now this leads us to the key fob. We've got the remote start function. We've got lock and unlock. Pretty simplistic. Now popping to the back, we've got a hydraulic hatch and quite a bit of storage. Again, this is a RAV4 competitor and so it's very large in the cargo area, just like the RAV4. Got a little charging port in the back and in fact, you lift this up, spare tire underneath as well. And then you can see these to fold down the seats and they're just pull tabs. So you can get even more storage if you want. Um, again, it's all manual, so just plop. Really cool with the taillight design, if you ask me. And then we've got the Kia logo here, 4X badge, to let you know that it's got the all wheel drive system. And that's the rest of the rear. Now take a look at the door panel in the back. Uh, it's not soft touch here, but once you pop down below it is. And then on this area as well, where you're gonna rest your arm. Pretty cool door handle design. And then here are the seats. Got some nice trim all down the center. Quickly pop in, just like the Rav Ford's. Spacious back here. The camera will focus. There you go. Got a little storage pocket. We've got vents here in the rear. Uh, and then headroom overall, I'd say is pretty darn solid. Now take a look at the front door panel. You can see again with the soft touch trim. It's actually soft touch at the top too, which is cool. All of your window controls. It's better look at those mirror adjustments. The mirrors do have blind spot monitoring. And then here is the front seat, perforated all down the center. We've got our adjustments there on the side and then soft touch here on the dash. Got your parking brake there with your stability control as well. And then this is just cool with that vent design. Now take a look at the steering wheel, you can see soft touch all around. You've got the black dot stitching there in the center. Bunch of practical controls on the front. Um, this is for like the center screen, for example. You have got depth cruise control with your lane centering. And then Kia still uses traditional stocks on the back. Now you got this full digital gauge cluster, which we can use to scroll through different bits of info with the vehicle, which I think is pretty neat. And then aside from that, we do have some different drive modes. Changed the look of the gauge cluster a little bit, but nothing crazy. Backup camera in reverse, trajectory lines turn with the steering wheel, pretty good resolution overall. And then as for the infotainment system, quick response time with the screen, um, so easy enough to use. Make sure you have some soft touch trim all across the dash and then again with the cool vent design there, that's, that's fun. And then this has the multi-function controls, so radio mode, climate mode. Uh, still not sold on this to be honest, but you know, that's what Kia's doing, I suppose. Got a little charging area in front, and then here's our shifter for that eight-speed automatic. We do have heated seats with this version. We've got a center locking differential. We've got a drive mode select in that area, and then some other controls around, like your parking sensors, auto hold, hill descent control, too. This has the over-engineered cup holders, which is still a nice feature for storage. Speaking of storage, there's a center console, pretty normal. There's soft touch on the top, and then the glove box is also 
normal, nothing crazy happening there. Manual mirror dimmer, uh, no center for this. So 2025 Sportage EX, uh, 33,495 is the total MSRP in this particular one. Let's see how it performs. Well, let's talk about visibility. Here's visibility over the hood, both the mirrors. Throughout the rest of the rear. And, oh. Let us set off in the Sportage. Sorry, gonna be an awkward camera view for a second because I gotta make sure I don't hit into any of these other cars. Tight parking lot. And we're good. We're good. So, Sportage. This is supposed to be a RAV4 competitor, and you can see they've like really, really mimicked the RAV4 a lot with this. I mean, 2.5 liter four cylinder, eight speed automatic. That's the same as the RAV4. Now, this has less power than the RAV4, which I find interesting. Um, but yeah, a lot of the a lot of the packaging is very, very similar, which is interesting to say the least. Uh, overall, it rides nice. And it's it's pretty pretty good with the suspension overall. See how the power is once we actually Oh no. Okay, well, we're going the alternative route. <laughs> so Bear with me here. These trains in Salt Lake, if you don't know, when they're coming through here, they could be there for two minutes. They could be there for like 10, 20, even longer. So it's not worth waiting unless you really have to. But it, honestly, if you have to get across, there's a bridge just down the road. So you might as well do the bridge instead of waiting in the tracks. Just my two cents on that. But yeah, I guess Subaru is another thing that people could be comparing this against. Yep, see, there's our first person that's like, not waiting, because that train's not moving. Let me tell you, it won't be moving anytime soon. I guess I'll pop it into the sport mode here. See what the acceleration is like. But yeah, I mean, overall, ride quality is nice. Seats are pretty comfortable. The interior in here is, I mean, this is not even a loaded up one. This is... Kind of like your value play, and it's nice. Kia does a good job with offering solid value on the cars. And features too, like, you know, it's got dual zone climate, for example, heated seats. I will say the auto stop start on this is way too aggressive. It is just constant. As soon as I get in the brake, just calm down there, buddy. And then it turns right back on because the AC's, yes, yeah, so it's not a great system. Gonna give this Dodge a little bit of space. Okay, punch it. Yeah, kind of what I expected. Naturally aspirated four cylinder. I mean, the transmission's good. Um, it's not quite as quick as the RAV4. That's the one downside of this compared to the RAV4, but it's more affordable. Package to package. So overall, Kia Sportage, it's a great value play. And again, Kia's really knocking, knocking on the door of the RAV4 and saying, hey, I wanna beat you, buddy. And it does in some ways, I'd say in other ways, you know, like the engine falls, falls a little bit short. But overall, it's a, it's a pretty solid crossover. So let me know you guys think about the Sportage and let me know if you'd go Sportage or if you'd go RAV4.